Guy, we're back here in 2025 at Adelaide RV getting you adventure ready. And the first thing you want to check before you go away on your holiday for the new year, tyres. Most vans will have five of them, so check all five. It is the point of contact with your van on the road, so it is important to make sure A, they're inflated to the correct pressure, B, they're still in date and good condition, C, there's no obvious punctures or nails ready to punch a hole in it. I keep talking about five because you got five. Check this one, that's why I'm leaning on it. So what we're gonna talk about is how to calculate the right pressure to put in your tyres. There's a whole bank of calculations you can Google up and it'll drive you mental. There's a whole ones that are a little bit vague and a little bit groovy, but I wouldn't go with them either. We'll show you the easiest way to do it. And once you know, you know. You probably write it on here with chalk so you remember when you check your tyres. So importantly to remember, if you overinflate your tyres, the middle piece here will be the bit of road traction. And you can imagine you'll have less road traction and the middle part of your tyre will wear out. The van also has more of a chance to skip around on the bitumen. If you underinflate your tyres, you'll almost get a concave and it fattens out here. So it's good on the beach because you'll get a much bigger footprint, but you'll also wear out the side bits of your tyres. And on the bitumen, your van will feel wobbly because the tyre will actually move on the rims. We're talking extremes, but you know what I'm getting at. If it's way underinflated, the whole tyre can move around and potentially debead, which is never a good thing. If your tyre is underinflated and you're on the bitumen road, because you've got a bigger footprint on the ground, your tyre's gonna get hotter. So there is a cheats way of checking after about an hour of drive, getting your tyre gauge out, and you'll know if you're getting too much footprint on the bitumen. So get it right, and your van will feel like it's towing much, much better, and you'll get better fuel economy. This is an easy sketch up of your tyres. This tyre is exactly that tyre that we've been talking about. You'll see a heap of numbers on there, but we'll talk about how to do your tyre pressures a little bit easier. These numbers are really to do with the tyre size, and unless you're changing tyres, you're not going to bother. The tyre rating and speed rating, the maximum pressure you can put in your tyres, the week in the year that your tyre was actually made. That's more important if you're buying a second-hand van or your van is five, ten years old. You want to know what tyres are actually on there. So one of the reasons we go for 50 is there's a general rule of thumb out there from the caravan land that says if you're going to drive at 100 k's an hour on bitumen, put 50 PSI on your tyres, half your speed. If you're going to drive on a dirt road for an extended period, you'll lower your tyre pressures because you're going to lower your speed and lessen the chance of punctures because your tyres have got a bit more give in them. But generally speaking, on a bitumen road, half your speed is a good general rule of thumb, which is what these information systems are about, a guide for you. You can do some further research later on. The other thing to do is if you leave here in our yard and you're at 50 PSI and you drive for an hour, get out and check, check your tyre pressures again. They'll be at about 54, 55 PSI due to the road heat. If your tyres are underinflated, that heat will be much higher because the surface area on the ground is much bigger, so you're generating more heat in your wheels. If you're overinflated, you might find it's a little bit less because you've got less surface area on the wheels. You'll also notice by feel that your van feels weird on the back of your car. What we're gonna talk about is how we actually got to that math originally and then made sure we're right. Now, if you head into Google, and we all do, it's got two O's in it which looks like tyres, so you get suckered into believing it all. Most of the charts and instructions you'll find are for radial tyres, not light truck tyres. And they use a different way to calculate what PSI you should have. On this exact van, with this exact tyre, based on the ATM weight, we would come out with a 40 PSI rating to put in your tyres but we know that they're light truck tyres, not radials. So light trucks come up with a different spec, which when we work through it, comes out on this exact van at 49 PSI, which is what we're gonna, we'll put 50 in because no one, our gauge could be different to your gauge by a PSI. So for the light truck tyres, the calculation is reasonably simple. You get your van weight and we'll use the ATM of 3,088 kilos. But of course, PSI, which is what we're going to put into it, is pounds per square inch. So we times that by 2.2 to get it into pounds. I'm not going to do the math in my head, I'm not that good. We then divide it by the amount of wheels, four. We then divide it by the industry standard of 35 square inches, which is per tyre's footprint. 
And that would come out at 49 PSI. Obviously, if that changes, or that changes, you're going to get a different set of numbers. So if I did the calculation for radial tyres, which Tom's going to do as a bit of a background thing, it doesn't really shift between kilos and PSI. They're basing it on a radial tyre, which has a lot less ply. So you're generally talking four, six, maybe eight ply tyres, whereas the light trucks are either going to be eight or 10 ply. So that's why we come out with a different calculation to get it, because you also find a lot of radial tyres won't get you up to that. So the math needs to change in the process. But as a general rule, 50% because it's easy to remember. The other thing you want to do on your vehicle is you might drive around the city in your car at 36 psi because it feels comfortable. Up your back tyres to 40 at least for towing. Leave the front where they are, but up the back it'll give you a bit stiffer ride. It will make your comfort zone a lot better when you're towing a van. So importantly, you go through all the math. You've done all the Google searches. You've chatted to everybody in the caravan park. The best way to do it is an hour after you've driven, check what your PSI has gone up to. The other thing to do is have a visual inspection of your tyres. Run your hand around it. Have a look. Does it look over? Does it look under? Is the tyre wear appear to be wearing evenly? Put a piece of wood across. Make sure your tyres are still in alignment. People forget about doing that sort of stuff. If you're unsure, Go to a tyre guy, he'll be able to tell you on his machinery, yes, they're at the right PSI for your load, they're wearing evenly, and it's an important thing at service time, ask the guys to rotate your tyres, because then your spare's gonna get as much life as the four on the ground. But it's all about you guys, get comfortable, get familiar with it, check the tyre pressures, check for wear, check for screws, they pop up everywhere, and check your wheel nuts. Gentlemen, check your nuts. If they come loose, it doesn't matter what tyre pressure you've got in there, you've lost a wheel that's in somebody's paddock and untold damage to the side of your van. One thing that I love, I've got a different brand to this. I've got a Ryobi one. My one would probably read 40 PSI, for example, and this would read 39. Who knows? They're a little bit different. They get banged around a lot. Do it with your machine. Get one. They're great. The batteries swap into other appliances. It's got a vacuum, got a blower, got torches, radios. It's a good piece of kit to have. You might win yourself a beer by doing somebody else's tyres for them. But it makes you know that you've checked because you've pulled your equipment out. That's us. Check them before you go on holidays because I know a lot of you are about to. Check them when you get home because if there's something wrong, you'll pick it up nice and early. We want to see you out in the road not worrying about tyres. We want to see you at the caravan park enjoying yourself. Come up, say good day. We're always out there. I look forward to our next video. Tom hasn't told me what it's going to be yet, but apparently I've got to clap my hands and slap my belly in just about everything now. People won't know what that means. <laughs> no.